drastically over last season. The rebounding has gotten better. The assist has improved because now they're moving the ball around. Every single person is a threat. The defense has to be honest. There will be no more cheating. Al Jefferson is getting much better looks inside because they're having a hard time double teaming him down on the post with four shooters surrounding him. Speaking of shooters, that's that would support that. They had 12 turnovers, the Hornets did. You know that's too many for Coach Clifford's taste. They also got out-rebounded by 12. That's never going to sit well with the coaching staff here with the Hornets. They tried to make some adjustments at halftime to remedy that. The silver lining to the story is that they did that on the offensive rebounds for the Cleveland Cavaliers. They cut down on the second-chance points. They limit them to zero second-chance points in the second half. So that is your silver lining. They clamped down. They made an adjustment. It just was not enough. But having said all that, the Hornets had a very good show. It was an honor to be a part of this evening. Dell, you're the best partner anyone could ever ask for. I'm just so thrilled for you and your family. This was a special night. You deserve every bit of the accolade and attention that you got this evening. And I'm glad that your family, at least two-thirds of your children, were here to help you celebrate. Now, normally at this point, post-game, in a loss, I'm quick to point out the silver lining. And there were actually several good points that happened. If you look at the stat sheet and didn't know the score, you would feel good about those stats. One of those is that the Hornets actually had more possessions than the Golden State Warriors did. 94 to 88, that says quite a bit because the Warriors do get a lot of possessions. They also got to the free throw line 30 times. The Hornets did, and they only had eight turnovers. All of those things are wonderful things. The only problem is they came up against the defending champs who happened to have a 19-game win streak and a little chip on their shoulder point to prove. So not a great night for the Hornets. Here's the point in the game where I normally talk about the silver lining. Well, we've kind of addressed it already. I mean, you look at the score. Hornets scored well over 100 points. They shot 33-pointers. Uh, they had 17 more shot attempts than their opponents did tonight. When you factor all those things in, Frank Comiskey had 20 points. Jeremy Lamb ended up with 19, both off the bench. You would think it was a really good night. The problem was the defensive end. We're not going to say that very often because it's Hornets team. They take their defense very seriously. Coach Clifford stresses it and has from day one. The problem was they weren't all on the same page. They ended up letting the uh, Clippers shoot 50% from behind the arc. If you let your opponent do that and they make 15 three-pointers that night, it's going to be a long night. They'll get things together, though. I have all the confidence in the world in them because this is the, something they take very seriously. The offense has sputtered in years past now that you have some injuries on the team. The bench is more important than it ever has been before, which means the defensive assignments have to be taken even more seriously now than they were when they were healthy. Back home as your Hornets get set to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm Stephanie Reddy. Glad you're here with us this evening. And Oklahoma City, they are a team that has had high expectations for a very long time now. They've had some injuries to deal with, but now they're a dynamic duo. They are healthy and on the court, and they're doing well. In fact, they're third in the Western Conference. You know what? It got me to thinking. We've got a former OKC member. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Reddy. So glad you guys are here with us as we get you ready for tip-off. And as you can see, players warming up behind me. That means we're getting closer and closer to the action here in the Staples Center. Well, my partners are gone. You know where Dell is. Guess where Eric was. Had a chance to catch up with your head coach, Steve Clifford. Talk to him about the game tonight. And this interview is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of South Charlotte. Town Charlotte. Hey there, I'm Stephanie Reddy. Glad you guys are here with us as we get you ready for tip-off. And tonight, I thought we'd talk about the man who has returned to action. Michael Kidd Gilchrist has returned two games, and he's already made a tremendous impact. First of all, hey there, I'm Stephanie Reddy. So glad you're here with us as we get you ready for tip-off. Now, from time to time, we do a little flashback. And tonight, I want to know if you remember this date, November 25th. You might recall it. The day before Thanksgiving, so you were probably doing some on the Pacers. Hey there, everybody. I'm Stephanie Reddy. So glad you guys are here with us as we get you ready for tip-off. And yes, the NFL Combine is in town, but who really cares about that? Your Hornets are playing the Pacers, and that's much more important this time of year because they're all fighting to get those eight spots in the Eastern Conference playoff position. Pacers are ahead of the Hornets. And remember, just before the All-Star break, Hornets handled the Pacers quite handily. You better believe they're going to come prepared and ready to fight the Hornets tonight. They hope, the Hornets do, to buck the trend of turning the basketball over, but to continue and get back on track for winning games on the road. You know what? Let's hear what the players think is important. Let's hear some sound bites. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Reddy. So glad you guys are still with us. We are getting closer and closer to tip-off time, which means it's time now to hear from your head coach, Steve Clifford. 
Hey there, I'm Stephanie Reddy. So glad you guys are here with us as we get you ready for a tip-off. Including tonight's game, your Hornets have 22 games left in the season. You know why that's good news? Because they're sitting firmly in the top eight in the Eastern Conference, looking to continue to solidify their position, maybe even climb up a bit as they continue to battle Eastern Conference foes. Well, tonight against the Pacers, looking to send a message to the NBA about their status in the league. Let's hear directly from the players and what they think about it. Much for helping us out here. You guys probably been wondering where Eric Collins is, had a chance to catch up with your head coach, Steve Clifford, to hear straight from your head coach in the Fox for tonight's game. And this interview is our inside look brought to you by the 2016 Toyota RAV4. Toyota, let's go play it. I'm Stephanie Ready. So glad you guys are here with us as we get you ready for a tip-off. Now, part of the beauty of being in the NBA is that they are just so forward-thinking. They love to get you guys, the fans, involved and let you see exclusive things and hear things that you normally would not be allowed to. Well, tonight, special treat for you all. Marvin Williams, one of your Charlotte Hornets, was gracious enough to agree to wear a microphone during the game. Yes, live action. You'll be able to listen in to hear what he's talking about. And now... A small sampling. Let's listen in. Ready. Glad you guys are here with us as we get you ready for tip-off. And as you may know, we are in the midst of the longest homestand in Charlotte franchise history. Seven games here inside Ty Warner Cable Arena. The Hornets did lose the last one, but despite that, they're still in a great position to control their destiny, sitting in the sixth position currently for the playoffs. We talked to some of your players this morning about keys to the game tonight to find success against the Magic. Let's listen. Not optimal, but 11 points. That's, I mean, 11 uh, turnovers overs that's serviceable but it's just the shooting tonight they had an off night they shot below 30 percent from behind the arc and allowed their opponent to shoot about 50 percent 50 percent exactly actually from behind the arc home inside time warner cable arena as am i i'm stephanie ready so glad you guys are here with us as we get you ready for tip off the philadelphia 76ers are in town it's the second game in a row that this hornets team will face the philly team now you know, you might wonder, is that difficult to do? Is it challenging? And I think what happens is they have an opportunity to make adjustments on the fly, very similar to postseason play. Perfect dress rehearsal for leading into the playoff push. Well, had a chance to check in with some of the players. Jeremy Lin leads the way. We hope we'll see him in action tonight. Here is what they thought the keys to the game would be tonight. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Ready. Glad you guys are here with us. You can see the Hornets behind me getting ready. That means we're getting closer and closer to tip-off time. Eric Collins had a chance to catch up with your head coach, Steve Clifford. And this interview is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of South Charlotte. Ontario, Canada. We're standing up for a reason with my partner, Stephanie Ready. <laughs> I'm Eric Collins. Stephanie is always lovely. Absolutely lovely. Thank but you. But even more especially lovely tonight. <laughs> and this is a tribute outfit today. Yes, it is. I, I want to make sure that everyone is very much aware of this. I know it's very colorful and bright, especially with the white tights, but today, myself and a lot of other people in the NBA, sideline reporters and former sideline reporters are all coming together to show our support to Craig Sager. If you're not familiar with him and his plight with cancer, he is continually battling it, but he is not doing so well. So this will be his last week doing live broadcasts. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to show our support. Check me out on Twitter because I use the hashtag sideline for Sager. We're all showing support, wishing him well, hence the colors. And I wish I had gotten the memo because I was <laughs> a, a sideline reporter back years ago. Yes. And, and Craig Sager is a wonderful, yes. wonderful human being. And yep. Just like you, I've had to box him out before. But he's <laughs> few interviews. I've competed with him, yeah. and he is a wonderful man, yeah. wonderful representative of the NBA. If you're struggling in one category, he has the skill set and the ability to pick it up to make up for those de uh, deficiencies. He is a do-it-all player. Those are the words of Gary's just winning the one game at home. You never know what's going to happen, but each... When you factor in the, the fact that they, as you said, got really smacked the first two on the road in Miami. They come back and you have the most competitive game of the series to this point. Game five, where both teams understand it's essentially now a three-game series. So it's very important to win this next one. And that's what the Hornets did. And I loved how they did it. They did it the old-fashioned way. They were making their threes like they've